30 Worst Caught in the Act Stories According to Reddit, for clarification, the question asked here is what's the worst thing you walked in on? Number 30 My parents divorced when I was a baby. I ended up living with my dad and got very sporadic visits from my mom in my hometown or hers. I lived half the country away from her. One summer and the first few days of a visit to her town, I thought I was alone in the house. I was 15, my siblings were several years younger than me, and out playing with their friends. And my stepdad and mom, I thought, were at work. It's hot outside and my stepdad is a tight wad, so there was no AC in the house. I decided to go, I decided I was going upstairs to soak in a cool bath since I thought I was alone. I start shedding my clothes and as I'm going upstairs, instead of waiting to get inside the bathroom, as soon as I reach the top of the stairs, my mom jumps out, wearing nothing but a lacy thong and yells surprise. Turns out my stepdad was supposed to come home early that day. Alright. And since I had only been there a couple of days, she assumed the heavy footsteps coming up the stairs were his. So there was a surprised, almost naked 15 year old looking at a very surprised, naked 32 year old who also happened to be his mom. We talked about it one time several weeks later, just so she could explain that, and it hasn't been mentioned since. Well, there you go. A response reads, reminds me of that green text where the guy's mom walks in at midnight to her son's room and she is like, Your dad's tired, but I want to play. I'll be right back. So he takes his clothes off. She comes back with a Monopoly box in hand, <laughs> sees him, starts laughing, and then walks back out of the room. In the morning, the dad is eating breakfast and is like, heard you tried to fuck your mom. <laughs> <laughs> now the story's obviously fake because who has breakfast these days but a good one nonetheless oh my god also who starts a monopoly game at midnight shoots and ladders maybe but monopoly totally fake number 29 so this happened last semester but i got home at around 11 11 30 and no one was home i'm like i'm like all right whatever I go to my room, throw myself down, and grab my water bottle. I walk into the kitchen to fill it, where the front door is small, three-bedroom apartment th through the school. Nigga, what? And in walks this girl, and I'm like, what the fuck is this girl doing in my house? We make eye contact. I realize it's my roommate in full drag. Fake boobs, wig, high heel, all of it. All he says is... I could explain <laughs> already having seen a lot of his of this kid's oddities I just say don't bother you do you man and I just went to fill my bottle and continued to play civilization or something for the rest of the night he now occasionally just chills in drag and talks makeup and clothes with my other roommate's girlfriend I'm writing this sitting next to his seven foot unicycle propped against the wall it's been an interesting year to say the least pm me if you want stories or to send pics animals especially also thank you to the homie who gilded me what the fuck he, he go post a picture of the unicycle what what an interesting world we're living in let's see if there's any comments here oh boy well, hey, you guys find that identity, man. No, no uh, judgment here. Number 28. Years ago, I was sharing a room with my homophobic brother. He is one of those guys that consider himself the alpha male, but is mostly just talk. I came early from work and I found him using a dildo in his ass. To this day, I can't look at the penis shape without having flashbacks. Oh my God. Somebody said, ain't that just the way? <laughs> what? Number 27. My older sister walked in one on me masturbating in the kitchen and shamed me for it. I hate her. And I was thinking about her friend, Grace. Come on now. Come on now. 
y'all are so ridiculous making Rick and Morty references. Why in the kitchen? I do it everywhere. <laughs> I do it everywhere. Stop shaming he, me. You're not the victim here. <laughs> Stop shaming me. Okay, number two, number 26, man. I walked in. I forgot Morty was actually cranking it in the bed. fucking kitchen like okay number 26 i walked in on both sets of parents repeatedly as a kid slash teenager but i was completely switched off like i walked into dad's room with him and his missus making out nude barely covered by a blanket and was just like dad what's the internet password and i didn't even process what i'd seen because he told me and i walked out I can't remember the other times, but my parents have told me I used to do it all the time. I only remember that one time because I still remember the password. I don't know. Naked people are gross. I mean, how many times as a parent do you need your kid walking in on you before y'all start, uh, before y'all start, uh, fucking locking doors? Somebody said, I don't know. Naked people are gross. Even when they're women, I'm attracted to. I just don't process nudity send clothed pics please send clothed pics okay number 25 i walked in on my friend's fiance getting drilled on the bathroom counter by a guy who is decidedly not her fiance which was disturbing enough in its own right but not what really fucked my shit up the image that's burned into my brain was the weirdo standing in the corner with his pants around his ankles up on his tippy toes furiously jerking off his floppy link limp cock in an attempt to chub up since he was apparently on deck the pained expression on his face told a story in its silence the story of a man desperately trying to perform who maybe imagined this very scenario playing out many times with him the cock shore hero virile and unrelenting an anthropomorphic piston churning in the in an engine of sex contained explosions propelling him to and fro a paragon of masculinity an image of pure unadulterated maleness who now stood shaking in a tiny guest bathroom while he watched another man fill that role that he had been so sure he would fill unsure now whether he could live up wishing he had just won that coin toss so he could have gone first and not had to follow such an impressive opening act hoping against hope that the man atop the untrue woman getting fucked six ways from sunday in the sink would last just a few moments longer so he had the time to gain his composure and achieve the requisite turgidity needed to even enter the girl let alone live up to the erotic play in his mind's eye that had filled him with so much false confidence a fact he only realized here in the moment when it truly mattered awash in so much emotion and racked with so much fear that his senses were numb to all that surrounded him unaware that a third man now stood in the same tiny square footage as he and other two lovers a room not even big enough to contain his insecurities let alone himself and three others i slowly backed out and closed the door and left him to his grisly task my presence there wouldn't help matters and may even delay him further for if he had opened his eyes and seen me his reptilian brain may very well have sensed a threat whether to his <laughs> position in line or to his very right to call himself a man at all i didn't need to deal with the ramifications of such an encounter not with all of the mescaline in my blood not with all the emptiness in my heart somebody said please tell me you told your friend about his fiance." Oh my god. Well, I just... <sighs> disgusting. 
Number 24, I worked for a university and one of the services my department offered was distance learning was just distance learning. I don't know what that is. We had a room that had cameras and microphones in it that was all remotely controlled from our office downstairs. One afternoon, two students decided to come in and have some fun on the desks. Of course, none of us are paying attention to the system since no classes were scheduled at the time until we heard loud moaning playing over the speakers. I, being the asshole that I am, wanted to say something over the loudspeakers in the classroom like she likes it when you pull her hair, but my boss wasn't down for it, so we simply turned off the system and let them finish. Finish her, says a commenter. Oh boy, man. Number 23. Second grade. Bathrooms without locks. Walked in on a girl on the toilet. She screamed. I screamed. Never forget. <laughs> well, that's adorable. And so he edits the comment to say, apparently, this is an elementary school rite of passage we must all endure. Who would have guessed? I guess other people have gone through that. Somebody said I had the same experience. I was in the first grade. Are you a slightly, are you a slightly older than me? And then somebody responds, yeah, I'm sure it was you. I'd recognize that voice anywhere. Uh, no, <laughs> the, the comedy is that there we're we're writing text we're typing text on a forum we can't hear anybody in case that needed to be explained to anybody listen, listen to this jesus christ oh my god where the funniest joke is you i'm kidding not you you like everybody listening but like dude the idea that somebody's listening and going i don't fucking get it <laughs> <laughs> Number 20. Number, uh, <laughs> number 22. The day I saw the two biggest dicks I've ever seen, here we go. I was the foreman working for a construction company years ago, and we were remodeling a Holiday Inn. Each morning I would get the list of rooms that were supposed to be empty for the day so we could go in and do our thing. The hotel gave me a master key so I could open the doors without having to get the manager. I got my crew started on the first room and, and I was going through the list and knocking, entering each room and blocking, oh, forgive me, and blocking the doors open so my crew could move on to the next room without having to get me to open the doors. I got to the second floor and knocked on the door, didn't hear anything and nobody opened the door so I slid the key in and opened the door. I walked in and there were two of the largest naked African American guys I've ever seen standing at the end of the bed and a girl laying on the bed naked masturbating. There was also a camera and an umbrella light off to a corner. It took me a second to realize what I was looking at. A porno. Or some, they were shooting a really, you know, sophisticated uh, ho home movie. As I was coming to the realization that I walked into some kind of porn shoot, one of the guys turned toward me and said, Come on in, man. You want to hit this? I must have looked like a deer in headlights to them because when he turned toward me, I saw literally the biggest dick I'd ever seen. I've been in locker rooms at gyms, so you see dicks from time to time, but this was from another world. It looked angry and it scared me. It was easily a foot long, so I'm standing there trying to figure out if that thing is real. The other guy starts walking over to me and and his buddy, and there it is, another massive dick. These dicks, dicks could have been twins. They were as big as my 26-year-old arm. All I could say was, I'm sorry, and back up to leave the room. I got out of the room, shut the door, and started to walk down the hallway. One of my crew comes down the hallway toward me and started to tell him what I just saw. And I started to tell him what I just saw, but the door opened behind me and one of the guys just walked into the hallway totally naked saying, come, come on back, man, you can hit this, she'll suck your dick. I just told him I had to go, motioned to my buddy to turn around and we went back to the first floor. He saw the guy's dick in the hallway too and the same look on his face and had the same look on his face that I did. I didn't speak Spanish at that point, so I couldn't understand what my crew was saying. 
the rest of the day. But I knew that they were talking about <laughs> because they kept putting their arm out like it was the dick and saying grande. <laughs> From that point on, in the <laughs> that guy in the hallway was known as the elephant trunk guy. Oh, that's rude. Come on, guys. Not everybody's circumcised, okay? Not everybody's circumcised. We got genitalia references coming in hot on the Kyle list. Number 21. I didn't personally walk in, but my mom did. I was told to stay outside. I was about 15, and me and my best friend, along with my mom, went shopping, and when we came home to see my brother's girlfriend's car parked in our driveway. So me and my friend were all like, oh, you know what they're doing, and my mom was brushing us off. She told us to wait outside, and we went into the house and quickly came out covering her eyes, repeating, I saw nothing. She caught my brother and his girlfriend mid-act in the living room. My mom was mortified, and me and my friend were thrilled we were right. How did your mom reach afterwards? You mean react? Like, after the sex and everyone's dressed. She avoided it, like she chanted, I didn't see anything for the longest time. I think my brother was scared she'd tell our dad because he was only 16 and he had a rule about girlfriends and boyfriends over at the parents' house and she was mortified to even mention it. Your dad was only 16? He was us when he was an infant. He he had us. G fu Man, there's some fucking typing errors on, on Reddit, boy. And they just changed the meaning of everything. It'd be funny if I didn't have to read it. It'd be wicked funny if I didn't have to read it. But I'm the one who has to read this shit. So maybe you're laughing, but this shit ain't funny to me. This is breaking my fucking brain. He 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 has us at... Come on now. God damn. God damn. All right. Don't you wish you had a mom that would react like some... some no boy. I didn't see anything. I didn't see anything. You can keep fucking that bitch. Number 20, I walked in on my flatmate getting pounded on the kitchen table. Jesus Christ. Somebody says, I've been that flatmate and I'm sorry, but you said you were going to visit your parents. Oh my. Okay, dude. You guys are gross. I ain't trying to see nobody banging unless it's in the context of some kind of porno. Maybe. And even after you know it's uncomfortable you know i gotta be in the mood for that shit do you get what i'm saying if i'm not in the mood and a porno comes on i'm like oh my god oh my god turn that off oh what what am i looking at jesus christ cover up jeez put something on number 19 in college one of my friends slash roommates had a girlfriend we all liked cool chick except i somehow walked in on her shitting five different times in a year it got so ridiculous that I got antsy about going to the bathroom with her around. It took a year for me to stop yelong. Yelong. <laughs> it took a year for me to stop yelong through the bathroom doors before I went inside. Savages, man. Lock the door. Lock the door. Number 18 used to walk into my buddy's house without knocking walked in on his mom and dad going at it big style in front room at 2 p.m on a tuesday big style jesus christ what the fuck is big style here's gonna be our risky click of the day oh somebody said <laughs> somebody said uh somebody said the same thing it's gonna be the risky click of the day ladies oh, oh god okay it's just an elephant seal <laughs> Uh, take it take it you bitch at any rate uh let's let's go ahead number 17 i was madly in love i got off work a bit early picked up fish and chips for my amazing fiance who just a month before had said yes to my proposal unfortunately i when i got home earlier than she expected i literally walked in on her fucking some dude both ass naked going at it like the end of the world and yet we hadn't had sex in a month because she hadn't been feeling well. Some guy I'd never seen before in my fucking apartment, on my fucking bed, with my fucking woman. They didn't even hear me come into the apartment. In hindsight, I'm glad I found out before we got married. But it still really fucked me up. I want to say I did something awesome like beat the guy up or whatever. But I just waited. Took a good 30 seconds for her to notice me. And then walked out. 
it was that or murder the fucking pair of them right there and then. Sometimes I wish I had just done that, but only sometimes. That is so rough. Guy says, that was almost four years ago. Now she ran off with whoever the fuck that guy was, and I spend two years blackout drunk and suicidal because I blame myself. You can't let these hoes ruin your life, man. I mean, take it from me, man. Just don't get close to anybody because you can't trust these sluts. You can't trust these sluts. Baby, can't trust a slut, baby. Baby, slut, baby. Ooh, you a slut. Slut, baby. <laughs> you a slut. I like that. Number 16. I, 25-year-old female, was being toured around a house I was planning to rent um, a room in from Craigslist by the owner. The last bedroom door was closed, so he knocked and opened the door to reveal a husky man with headphones um, on, aggressively jerking off. I still rented the room. That's what she's into. Must have been some dick. <laughs> he came with the place. Oh my god. Number 15, man. In our university's music school, there are several organ practice rooms. Oh yeah, you can practice on my organ in this room. You know what I'm talking about? We talking about this soundproof practice room for musicians and vocalists, but you can practice your mouth on my organ in this room. Soundproof. That's what it do! Woo! Sorry. Need to pick some stuff up after this too. As an instructor, I had the keys and was checking to see that the blousers, that the blowers were turned off before leaving. Blowers? When I opened the door, I heard human sounds. Human sounds? <laughs> and now, human music. Boop, 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 boop. Unbelievable. Coming from the behind the organ console, but couldn't see exactly who it was. I took a quick peek and knew immediately that it was one of my organ students and someone he obviously was into. Okay. I spared them any embarrassment by tiptoeing out of the room discreetly and locking the door quietly behind me. As far as I could tell, they never knew I saw them and I didn't comment at our next organ lesson, waiting to see if everyone, if he ever noticed my presence. Why are you so kind? If some, of course somebody makes the organ practice of his own joke. Come on now. Come on now. Number 14. Let's get out of here. Oh, this is by OP himself. OP ask a question to write his own story. Hail to the nah. What's the worst time he walked in on somebody you know what i'm talking about when i was about 13 years old i ran inside from playing touch football with my friends to go to the bathroom i really had to piss now i'm not much of a sportsman okay i just like to play the fuck no i used to <laughs> i used to like to play the fuck i wanted to I, I, i'll turn the story off. I'll, I'll i'll tell the story all right. I just like to play for fun of hanging out with my friends, but my stepbrother was a real shut in. He rarely bathed, had long greasy mullet and always wore his jean jacket that had a Metallica patch ironed onto the back. We were the same age, by the way. So I run upstairs and throw open the door and stop dead in my tracks. The toilet was in one corner of the room and the sink was in the next and the sink was next to it about an arm's length away. There squatted my stepbrother, bracing his body weight on the sink and, and the back of the toilet. Between his legs stood the plunger, suctioned to the linoleum floor. The end of the plunger was up his ass. I backed out of the bathroom and closed the door. I honestly can't remember to this day where and when I took a piss that day. When I saw my stepbrother later that day, we made eye contact but said nothing. He could tell by the way I looked at him that I wasn't going to tell anyone. A couple of days later, my stepdad, his dad, was super pissed off at the dogs. I came out of my room to see him yelling at the dogs with the plunger in his hand. The end 
was all chewed up. Oh my God. Somebody responded the same thing I just said. Oh my God. This is a new murder collection story. This is a, this is a list. Boyos. That's, that's only number 14. Woo. Number 13. My parents having sex in the tub. Ugh. You know what I'm talking about? Imagine this inspired your username. This person's called Violet Screams. Or is it? I can't tell if it's Violet Screams or Violet's Creams. <laughs> Somebody said first one, then the other. Violet Screams, then Violet Screams. Oh my god. Number 12. I walked in on my mom watching the Anal Princess Volume 2, taped. She had confiscated from me the day before. Oh. Okay. Number 11. In fifth grade, I went to the bathroom during class, and I saw a girl with obvious Down Syndrome in the boys' bathroom. Oh. I'd never seen anyone with Down Syndrome before and didn't know what it was, so I was really confused. But I didn't even mention the weird part. She was sitting in a urinal. I stared, she stared, and I gave an, uh, I don't think you should be here. And then she stood up and waddled away with her pants around her ankles. Till the very next day. What does this mean? <laughs> what does this mean? <laughs> what does till the very next day mean? What the fuck? Oh my god, it's the duck song reference. <laughs> If you don't get it, man, go listen to the duck song till the very next day. You want to away. <laughs> Got any grapes? <laughs> I really like that. I really like that music video because the animation makes it seem like like that dude's going to pull out a gun and fucking kill this duck. And I like that. Woo. Oh, this is a list. Boy, it's been a while. Been a while since we have a good list, man. Jeez. Number 10. Do you know there are people in their mid-80s still having hot, sweaty, hair-pulling, ass-spanking, dirty-talking sex? I know there are. I accidentally walked through a room where my 80-plus-year-old friend was banging his 80-plus-year-old girlfriend. They didn't know I was there, and I took a full minute to get out of the room. Apparently, an 80-year-old woman can still be a naughty girl who needs a good, hard fucking. I think we need to look up 80-year-old woman, just, just so that you all have a good picture in your brain. 80-year-old woman. That's 80 years old, guys. Get a little bit of that 80 year old action, you know? 80 year old woman, though, please. Yes, thank you, please. Okay. So let's get back in there. Okay. Somebody responds My wife's paternal grandfather died at just over 100. His second wife, he has, he was a widower, was a youthful 80 at the time. They had sex the morning he died. When I went over after getting the call to wait for the funeral home to come get his body, we were chatting and she was like, he seemed okay this morning since he woke me up with some great sex. You know, he never even needed a Viagra. I'm hoping I go the same way. If there was a camera for me to turn and look at, I'd be looking at it right now, okay? I'd be, I'd be looking at it. Uh, you, uh, what? You, what the, you know what I'm talking about? What the fuck? 
Number nine, man, Jesus Christ, this list is taking me to task. This list is taking me to task. Number nine, I walked into my best friend's house as he was about to kill himself with a rifle. Now, this is what I'm talking about. We almost forgot that this wasn't just exclusively a sexual list. You know what I'm talking about? I walked in on my best friend who was about to kill himself with a rifle. I came in unannounced to grab something and he was sitting in a chair face bright red wiping tears off of his face i looked at him and a few feet away leaning against a couch was a rifle i looked at him the rifle and he stares at the floor he's been going through a really shitty breakup with custody problems and the psycho x ruining his life man that's life baby that's life sometimes it sucks so much i asked her if he was going to be okay he just kind of stared away and said yeah i think so yeah that was 15 years ago and he is okay and we are still good friends leaving a mess for other people to clean up there are so many neat ways for you to kill yourself bro not judging you know we're all going through a lot it's hardcore blah 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 glad this guy could be there for his friend some shit somebody responds no that was probably the best time to walk in could have gone a whole different way if he didn't have a friend there right then Sometimes being alone with your thoughts is the worst thing in the world, which is why I'm constantly giving out my kick and Snapchat, faggots. It's not for you to throw memes at me and try your best to, to be fucking funny, but really actually come off like an autistic piece of shit, you fucking teenager. It's for you to have somebody who's there, right? In case you are left alone with them thoughts too long because trust me life gonna get serious not like i just back up with my boyfriend or girlfriend i can't fucking feel how i'm supposed to do it i understand it's gonna get real motherfucker i'm talking about you being in prison for something you didn't do real motherfucker there goes your freedom I'm talking about like no matter how you fucking speak to people, no matter how you choose your words or articulate what you mean, no one's ever going to understand you, motherfucker. I'm talking about even worse than that, people assuming they know where you're coming from and assuming they understand you and assuming that because they've been through something similar to you, that even though they don't share your background and even though they're not you. That they know what's going on in your life baby you're gonna see some shit in your life we ain't just talking about snakes in the grass backstabbing sluts fucking around on you when all you wanted was to make them happy or some bullshit like that we're talking about real fucking life baby and sometimes sometimes all you need to be able to press forward and roll out of bed and feel like you actually want to go through with this for another day is to have one person that's fucking there for you even if it's temporary you know what i mean even if they're just making time for you out of boredom or something like that to have somebody there it'll make the difference but if you don't know about that shit i hope you never have to learn about that shit and live in that bliss until the day you die you live in that bliss until the day you die number eight i live in two bedroom apartment with four guys so it was two guys per room i usually left first because of my job one day i realized i had forgotten some important documents and came back to get them i opened up the door to my room and found my roommate laying naked on his bed his legs up in the air and blow drying his balls he later explained to me that he had some sort of jock itch and needed to keep that area moisture free <laughs> the images burned into my brain to this day and on his birthday every year, I send him a picture of a blow dryer. That's what a blow job is, right? Right? <laughs> oh my god. Blow job, blow job. That's Kyle's impression of a blow dryer, guys. Ooh. It's two days away from my birthday. Why am I recording like these long ass lists for fucking YouTube. I have shit to do. Number seven, I used to sleep at my cousin's house all the time. I was raised by my mother and she's a nurse, so I spent many a night there. One night, when I was 12, I was at his house. It was just us and his three younger siblings. When I stayed there, I crashed in his room, so around 9 p.m., I say I'm going into the shower. 
His shower used to take a long time for the water to become hot, so I turned the water on and went into the living room with my towel and watched Who Wants to Be a Millionaire for about 10 minutes. Then I hear a bunch of shit falling in my cousin's room, so I walk towards it. I open the door and there's my cousin completely naked with a dish towel wrapped around his erect dick, and he's knocking everything down in the room with his dick. I'm talking sports figurines, lots of books, VHS tapes, video games, basically anything you could think of that would be in a 13-year-old's room. So I say, what the fuck, cuz? And he just looked at me calmly and says, I thought you were in the shower. I was going to clean it up. I always do. <laughs> I always do being the implication that he does this all the time. Never mentioned it again. Oh my god. <laughs> I always do. Here we go, man. Okay, number six. Walked in on my dad when he had porn up on his computer. Fuck these pop ups. Okay, dad. <laughs> pop ups, he said. Well, he's not wrong. I think this comment means to insinuate that his cock is the one, the thing popping up in this, uh, come on now guys. Number five, woo, a walking in story from a party I was at when we were all about 17 to 18. A couple of hours in, everyone has turned up except one of the birthday girl's best friends. She eventually calls and says, oh shit. When I thought, when I, when I heard turned up, I figured like they, you know, they turned up, you know what I mean? But I mean, everybody has like arrived at the party. This is what that means. You know, a couple of hours in, everyone has arrived at the party. Oh my God, vernacular. Uh, except the birthday girl's best friends. She eventually calls up and says that she's out at a club and can she bring the guy she's met who is named like sketch apparently the guy's name is sketch half an hour later they turn up pretty drunk and after 15 minutes we realize that they have vanished upstairs birthday girl doesn't really want them fooling around in her bed but no one wants to walk in on them either so we send up the drunkest guy to call them down he toddles off upstairs and then about a minute later comes back into the living room looking pale and distraught he sits down we ask him what happened he says i went to open the door and he was going down on her and then he looked over at me and I think he, and I think he's a vampire there was blood all over his mouth so I left turned out they started fooling around and it became clear that it was her time of the month but sketch decided to power on through we'd we'd accidentally sent up the person who in a drunken haze was not mentally equipped to deal with that at all he looked broken for the rest of the night that poor guy some, some people just want to go to a party and have a good time. You set them upstairs to go check out somebody going down on a, on a menstruating woman. Menstruating woman. I got to write a song to menstruating woman. Number four. I thought nobody was home. When I got home and I remembered my sister borrowed my laptop. I'm oh, sorry. Why, did, why was I snapping faster? I had... Oh boy, number four. We gotta make it through this or my ADD is gonna kick in and that wild, two days to the birthday. And I'm probably gonna be spending the birthday on the channel. So everybody can hurl whatever dumb comment at me that they think is hilarious, right? Oh man, what if this is like the last year I really fuck around with this channel? Hey. Number four. I thought nobody was home when I got home and remembered my sister borrowed my laptop to do her schoolwork the night before. I go to her room and get it and she has it playing porn while she is pounding herself with a cucumber. I've never ran out of the house so fast, went and hung out with a friend till later when everyone would be home. Never mentioned what I saw to anyone until now. For God's sake, Sarah, I was going to eat that later, and now it's going to taste like cucumber. Incest is a real page on Reddit. I wonder if I should go read stuff from there. Jerkins. 
go ahead and put that link right up there. Uh, ba ba booey. Now, if the government finds my computer, they'll be all like, "What the motherfuck? Look at these goddamn how to trick cops!" Of course, we got them. Let's sprinkle some crack on them and get out of here. Number three. So I'm going out tent camping at state park. It's early morning, maybe six ish. I need the restroom down the path. I grab my shaving kit, start walking the 500 yards, and about halfway I hear a noise, and I look to my left. Directly into the eyes of a dude hammering away at his girl doggy style inside their tent, with the door open. I pause, kind of scared, and the dude waves at me, and I wave back. The girl looks up, and she waves, and I wave back, and they continue fucking. And I continue walking. Somebody says the best part is the fact that they were doing it doggy style. In that position, the girl likely didn't see her man wave. So they both independently saw you, waved, and continued to smush. Or continued the smush. They were meant to be. And it's beautiful. Hmm. Number two, I had a roommate my freshman year of college who never stayed in our dorm because a friend of his lived off campus. One day after getting out of class early, I opened the door to find him standing butt naked, humping a sock bopper. Do you guys know what sock boppers are? Sock boppers. Sock boppers. More fun than a pillow fight. You blow them up, you put your hand inside, you get ready to have the time of your life. Sock em Boppers by Milton Bradley. Were Sock em Boppers by Milton Bradley? Sock em Boppers. Who made them though? Who made the Sock em Boppers? You son of a bitch. You fucking tell me who made these sock and boppers. Who made them? Who made these fucking sock and boppers? More fun than a pillow fight, motherfucker. Alright. Alright, guys, look, um, we'll get off the sock and boppers, but I'm gonna get the bottom of it. Just don't you worry about it. Don't you worry about it. Anyway, he's humping a sock and bopper. He paused, looked at me dead in the eyes and says, close the door on your way out and sit in the hall or something. I'll be done in a minute. True to his word, about two minutes later, he walked out fully dressed, winked at me and told me to have a great semester. Only saw him around campus after that. <laughs> sock and boppers. This makes me wonder which box in the basement mine are in. You guys are crazy. You guys are crazy. Number one, man. Didn't really walk in, but the most traumatizing time. Oh boy. Let's hear it. When I was six, I had friends over for a play date, and I went to go hide underneath my parent my grandparents' bed with my friend. Oh my god. My grandparents came into the room after us. So they had no idea we were in there, so they started undressing and went on the bed. Sounds started. I started crying. But they were basically deaf, so they couldn't hear me. But my, wong, my mom walked by the room and thought she heard me crying, so she walks in. Grandparents start screaming at my mom. Mom starts screaming at my grandparents. I run out from under the bed and my friend trails behind me. It was awful. A memory to be treasured. <laughs> that was the list, ladies and gentlemen, you know. <laughs> Uh, for once, I'm at a loss for words here. I wonder if sock and boppers are on uh, are on uh, the Amazon, you know, monkey list here. 
they're obviously not on the wish list, but I wonder, uh, I wonder if they sell them, you know, they sell sock and boppers. Is that cool? Big time toys, colors may vary. Sock em boppers. You know, what a world. Look at this, look at this little dude they got fucking selling this shit. They put, they put hairstyles like this on kids and he's Asian. Oh boy. You know, what are you, what are we supposed to do? What are we supposed to do? Oh, blah, 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 blah. What a world we living in. Hope you guys have had an interesting day. Um, hope this list holds you over. Selfie time. Oh shit. Oh my God. You almost crashed. Oh, uh, hit a kid. Isn't this kind of funny? <laughs> Ten minutes later. And his expression when we hit. Oh my god. Oh my god. That's rude. This is rude. Guys, you guys have a great... Uh, day evening who knows when you're listening to this i'm not clairvoyant love you talk to you soon maybe i'll try to stream uh alien isolation tonight but you know odds are i'm gonna have people up my ass just not bothering me which is exactly what you know you want right love you later <laughs>